Hello, welcome to your journey to build the Quawu 3 wrap arm. There's two versions to the Quawu 3. There's this wrap version that you're watching the video of, and there's the socket version. Generally speaking, the wrap version is better for somebody with a longer residual arm. Maybe the amputation is at the wrist, whereas the socket version is better if you have a shorter residual arm, maybe less than half of the original residual, the original arm or the intact arm. Um, it kind of depends. You need to know the recipient and know, and maybe get to know these two designs better to see which is the better fit. This video is all about generating the part for the wrap arm, both the leather version and the plastic version. I recommend the leather version. I'll say that a couple of times. It's just more comfortable. Um, it does require getting some leather and doing some rivets. It's not that hard, um, but I do recommend the leather version only because it's just more comfortable. All right, let's get started. So on the screen here, I have OpenSCAD. You should have downloaded OpenSCAD, opened all the files that come with Quawu 3 into a single directory. You need to put all the files in there. There are some STL files in the download of Quawu 3. This OpenSCAD program will modify those files. So don't use the files as they are downloaded. Use them as they are generated out of this program. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn off the automatic preview. User interface gets really slow. I'm also going to hide the code. You can leave the code up if you want, but just because this is a small video screen, I'm going to hide the code to make the actual images larger. So this button here will just center the whatever I am rendering. The first thing is this list of all the parts. These are all the parts that you're going to have to render. First obvious choice is right arm or left arm. And the second obvious choice is leather versus plastic. I'm gonna jump back and forth between leather and plastic just to show you the differences, but you'll have picked one or the other. Again, the leather is assuming you will cut the leather and fit it later, and the plastic version is gonna create that flexible plastic wrap for you. The first real parameter is the hand width. This is measured across the knuckles. It's the primary measurement of the size of the hand. Um, it's in millimeters. The next thing is the arm length. This is measured from the crease at the elbow to the crease at the wrist. As I adjust this arm length, the whole arm just gets longer and shorter. The forearm circumference in this wrap version is measured at the elbow. Technically, it's the largest part of the forearm, which can be a little bit below the elbow, but what it'll translate it to is the measurement at the elbow because these side arms on this particular wrap version, the stiffeners are straight. So it's going to be the widest part of the forearm. The bicep circumference similarly is going to be the circumference at the largest part of the bicep that the, the cuff will go around. The padding thickness is whatever you're going to add. If you're doing the leather version, you can set this to zero. Um, I don't recommend using padding on the leather version. It's just not necessary. On the plastic version, Two millimeters, kind of a standard um, neoprene padding that you can buy. The palm bolt diameter, you need to adjust to fit whatever size your hand width is. If you have a very small hand width, then you're probably going to want a four millimeter palm bolt. If you've got a larger adult hand, you're going to want a six or maybe even eight if you've got a really large hand. For the elbow bolt, it's a similar thing. You're going to want to match the elbow size. So if you've got a large forearm circumference or a big round arm, then you're going to want that bolt to be larger. And you're going to look at this cuff and see what bolt size hole kind of fits in there. If it's a child size, it might be a six, probably won't go as low as four. If it's an adult size, it's probably going to be an eight millimeter bolt at the elbow. If you're doing the leather version, you have to choose a rivet size. If you're using copper rivets, like I recommend, they're 3.1 millimeter. If you're using Chicago bolts, they tend to be five millimeter. So whatever um, rivets you're using, you're gonna to wanna to measure the, the diameter of the shaft. The strap width, again, two, 25 millimeters is an inch. If you're getting one inch Velcro straps, that's what you're gonna to wanna to set the strap width at. You can set that smaller at a half inch, if you're on a child size arm, you might need smaller than one inch. All right, so now that we've chosen all of our parameters, 
we're basically going to have to go through one by one, choose each part, press the render button, which is the little button here with the hourglass, and let each part render. Some of these parts take a while. Um, could be as long as 20 minutes. It just depends on your computer. And let each one render, and then when they're done rendering, save them as STL if they're 3D printed parts. When you get to these leather template parts, you're going to save as an SVG file. And the SVG files, you're going to print out with Chrome because I found that Chrome prints SVG files on paper at the correct scale. All right, so now that we've got all the parts, then um, we're going to go ahead and set up the 3D printer. My slicer is Simplify 3D. That's kind of what I'm used to. Here uh, works fine. There are other slicers out there. Any one of them should work fine. All the parts, all the 3D parts, should be generated in the orientation that I print them at. I start by letting, in my case, Simplify 3D generate the supports by itself um, for my 3D printer. Um, most parts don't need supports. I go from the base only. The main thing I don't like is when it generates supports inside the holes. You can't clean them out. And so I tend to go in and remove supports if it's generated any supports inside the hole. Or I just set up the supports manually so that they're only outside. Because if it's put supports inside any of these little holes or bolt holes, you'll never be able to clean them out. So. And there we go. So then I'm going to go ahead and print these parts. So I print all these parts in PETG. PETG is what I recommend for the Quawoo 3. It's the best balance of easy to print and strength. PLA tends not to be strong enough, in my opinion. And there are other better, stronger plastics, ABS or what have you. They're just harder to print, harder to get as accurate. So I, all my tests and all my prints nowadays are done in PETG. The hinges are printed in TPU. Any TPU from 82 Shore A hardness up to 95 Shore A hardness. So find out what the Shore A hardness of your TPU is. The lower number, 82, is softer, more pliable, more bendable. 95 is a little bit stiffer. Both will work. I recommend 82, the softer. It just springs back better. It's a little easier to bend a little better behavior to it than the 95. 95 is easier to print, so I get it. If that's all you can print, um, go ahead and print 95. It's gonna work, it'll work fine. Okay, so you should be able to generate your parts and get all your parts printed. And once they're all printed, let's move on to the first assembly video. Thank you.